usually I'm a streamer guy. I fish a lot of streamers. But I also love to throw attractor patterns. So these are all dry flies. Um, and I've really grown to like fishing big gnarly dry flies or you know you can even get a little bit more techy but still have your fly being a tractor. So I gotta stop saying that so loud. <laughs> I'm gonna blow everybody's eardrums out. Adjust my vice real quick. We're gonna start out with a parachute pattern. Who's heard of a purple haze before? You guys have fished the purple haze. It's a great pattern, just like a parachute atom, just with a purple body. Um, but I've been playing with a fly that's um, that's a purple haze, but it's kind of more of a techy purple haze, a thin body. It's got a little bit of toned down hackle, kind of shaped like a mayfly wing. So we'll do that one first, if I can thread my thread up. As I'm doing this, if you have questions or whatever, feel free to raise your hand. If I'm doing something incorrectly, make sure you correct me. Okay, so I have uh, UTC 70 denier thread. And I'll just dress this hook. This hook is a barbless dry fly hook from Fulling Mill. So you can see how that has a kind of aggressive upswing to the hook point. You'll see a lot of the dry fly hooks that are barbless with that. And they really retain fish really well. Um, so on a lot of parachute patterns, you're gonna start out by tying in the parachute post first. Um, but I'm not gonna do that with this one. I think it just adds a lot of stuff in the way as you're tying the fly. So I'll, tell, I'll show you how to tie in a parachute post when you're ready for it. So the tail on this one is going to be moose, but it's speckled moose. So see this? Uh, it's just kind of brownish grayish. This is a, called speckled moose body hair or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, speckled moose body by nature spirit. And it's really good stuff. So I'm just going to take a few fibers from there. And align the tips. And you'll see I just I don't have a whole lot of hairs here. I'm just gonna tie those in so that roughly the the length of the shank of the hook. And you notice at the very back of the where I tied that in, I didn't crank down on my thread because I don't want to flare it. So that's that's a good amount of flare for that. Even though it's moose, it still will flare. So then I'll wrap that forward a little bit and cover it up and trim it off. So I'm gonna tie in the parachute post here. Um, I use one of two materials. The one I use a lot is uh, this hairline parapost wing material. It's treated with watershed, so it repels water. It's pretty buoyant stuff. But I've switched over to the EP Trigger Point International fibers. And the reason I did that is because you can see that this is kind of a blend of gray. So when it gets on the water, it kind of looks like those mayfly wings with little veins going through them and stuff. So it, it breaks up the solid white a little bit. This color is called Quicksilver, but they have it in a whole bunch of different colors, hatch specific colors like cinnamon caddis and blue winged olive and stuff like that. It's really cool stuff. So I'm gonna take about as much as I think, or, or half as much as I think I'll use because I'm gonna double it up. So I want my wing post to be double that. So a lot of people when they tie in their parachute posts with the synthetic material, and we're gonna do it about right here, they'll take their material and they'll come up from underneath. And what that does is it just creates a bunch of bulk under the fly that you don't want. So what I do is I just take it and I will tie it right on top of the hook shank with a few wraps. And I'm just gonna get rid of this long stuff so it's not in the way. Then I'm gonna make a few wraps right in front of that. And then I'm gonna take my thread and wrap up the post. 
Now thread tension's key here. If you pull too hard, it'll unravel. If you don't pull hard enough, it's not gonna make a very good post. But you don't need a gallows tool or a parachute post tool to do this. So I'll just wrap that up about right there. I don't know exactly how many hook eye lengths that is. I just do it till it looks right. And the thing with this UTC thread is you can twist it counterclockwise and flatten it out. And it lays really flat. So I'll take my thread and crank down so that that parachute post kind of locks in place. Oh, I need my super glue from my desk. Do you know where the fly fish food thing is? Uh, I just have a thing of super glue there, or still Brandon's. Thanks, man. Okay, so this is Uniflex, the same stuff as Spanflex, it's stretchy. And that's what I'm gonna do the body out of. It's really durable stuff. So when you tie this in, I'm gonna tie it in right behind the parachute post. <clears throat> and I like this vise because I can turn it, you know, toward me so I can see down exactly at a 45 degree or 90 degree angle on this and it stays where I put it. We've got a really good tensioning device. So I'm just gonna hold it there, and instead of just tying it in right here at the tip, I'm gonna tie it in with it going forward of the hook eye a little bit, and use two really snug wraps at first. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this tight, and then wrap back. So wrap back, and then go forward. Now I can let, let the tension off. Yeah, that lid's on there tight, yeah. thank you. Just for that, you get to keep this purple haze that I'm tying. All right. Okay. So the reason I did that is so now when I when I cut this off, I can just pull this tight, trim it, and that rubber sucks back into those thread wraps. So there's really no bulk right there at all. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap that uh, UniFlex forward. And I, should, I built up a nice smooth body with the thread. So you've got a nice slender body with a little bit of segmentation here. It's a lot easier to achieve that with this floss than it is with dubby. You could also do it with a biot too, but this, this uh, flexi or this uniflex is really easy to work with. So I'm gonna tie that off right here. And then I'm just gonna use that same technique to trim that off. I'm just gonna pull it tight and trim. Okay, now this is where my parachutes get a little bit technical. And if you pay attention to the details here, you should be able to tie a parachute that is wrapped really nicely around the post. You don't have a lot of fibers sticking up. And most importantly, you don't bind any fibers down when you tie off your hackle. Does anyone have that issue with when you're tying parachutes? Okay. So, the purple haze typically calls for a grizzly and a brown, okay? So, I could use this guy. Does anyone know what this one is? It's a Cree. You've seen Cree? But I won't do that. I just brought that to show it off. I'll use stuff that's easier to attain. So, this is a Bard Dark Ginger. It's by Whiting. Most other companies call Bard Dark Ginger Cree. It's not Cree, but when you put it on a hook, it looks almost exactly the same. And this stuff is a lot easier to get. We have a whole bunch of this in the shop. So I'm gonna take one of these and then another one that's just grizzly. So let me find some appropriately sized ones. Okay, so on a hackle, I'm just gonna find some good parts to tie with. It used to be back in the day, if you wanted long, good hackles to tie with, you had to find a saddle. <clears throat> the saddle hackles are quite a bit longer. This is a bronze grade cape from Whiting. And I've got, let's see, this guy is a size 16 and it's about nine inches long. And that's on a cape. So the, the quality is phenomenal. But anyway, You've got a side of the hackle that has a lot more color than you've got a dull side. So we'll call it the shiny side and the dull side. 
So I'm going to stack those hackles on top of each other so that both the shiny side is facing the same direction on these, okay? And then I'm going to pull off some fibers so that I've just got the stems showing. So when I tie these in, I have my thread in the back of the parachute post and I'm going to lay those kind of at a 45 degree angle just like that so that the shiny side is facing me. So I've got those and, the, and the, the stems are on my side of the hook chain. So I'm just going to tie those in with one wrap of, ha of thread on the back side and then I'm going to move my thread forward to the front. i got to do that again because I bumped my thread. Hold on. And lining these up correctly and getting them tied in right really makes a difference when you wrap, start wrapping them. Okay, so I've got them tied in, but then I'm gonna pull those straight up and I'm gonna wrap those up the parachute post. And then I'm going to bring my thread back down. So I've got my hackles tied in how I want. And there's a little bit of leeway here. I've got some stem showing and that, that helps out when I start to wrap it. If you don't have any stem right here, when you start to wrap your fibers, that's when you have hackle fibers that start to point up and get all squirrely on you. So I'll come in here and trim off those tips. And the other thing now is I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing and just create a little thorax. This is just some purple dry fly dub that I've blended with some uh, ice dub. And you'll see that I'm just using a little bit, not very much dubbing at all. So I'm just going to kind of crisscross. And then when I, let's see, when I finish, I want to take my thread and wrap it around the parachute post and let it hang on the back side of the parachute and let it hang there, okay? So now I'm ready to wrap my hackle. Um, so this part's key if you want your hackles to wrap nicely. I'm going to take those stems and I'm just going to kind of gently put a crease in those stems so now those hackles are hanging off at a 90 degree angle instead of just straight up. And because I have a, a little bit of stem hanging out now, now I can manipulate those feathers so that they start to wrap with the shiny side facing down. You wanna make sure they stay on that thread. The first wrap is always the toughest to get to, to sit right. Let me rotate that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to wrap each successing wrap or the next wrap underneath the previously wrapped hackles. You don't just wrap it however it lays. You want to make sure that every wrap of hackle goes under the previously placed hackle. So you see how that looks? There are no fibers facing down now. Okay, so this is where people struggle a lot with tying off parachutes because a lot of people say you gotta, you know, grab all these fibers, pull them back, and tie it off at the head. There's really no need to do that. So we have a perfectly good tie-in part, uh, part of the fly on the parachute post. So what I'm gonna do now, and it's critical that I left my thread where it was, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna go underneath underneath the wrapped hackle, but on top of the unwrapped hackle, or the, the stems, and I'm just gonna wrap that twice. Let it hang, and now my hackle's tied down. Plenty of tension there. So now I'm gonna come in here and just trim off those stems, and you can see that that parachute hackle is perfectly placed. It's not gonna get in the way of anything. The next thing that causes a lot of frustration is now how do you whip finish this, right? 
If I take my thread and advance it through that thorax, it's going to make just a big line of thread through there. So, you know what? I forgot my bodkin too. <laughs> I'm going to just try it like this. Let's imagine this is my bodkin. So I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on the tip of it. A little bit too much. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to jam it in. That'll actually work just fine. And I'm going to put that super glue right where I wrap my last wrap of thread. I'm going to do that again because I don't know how how well this little thing is going to work. And then I'll just cut my thread off. And I've fished parachute patterns using that technique for years and years and years and I've never had one come undone due to the super glue or due to not whip finishing. Okay, so now the post, one thing that you can do to kind of make this post more technical or more tactical, I guess, instead of just coming in and cutting across the top, I'm gonna to make it into a mayfly-shaped wing. So I'm gonna tilt it toward me to do it, and I'm just gonna cut at this angle right here. So that gives it a little bit more of a mayfly type profile. It's thicker in the back and thinner in the front. So that's it, that's the uh, tactical purple haze. Any questions on that fly? No, it won't catch fish. What's that? This is called uniflex, but spanflex or lifeflex, there are lots of different types of uh, flexi rubber band material you can use for it. You can do this fly with a biot as well. All right, this one's yours. Don't forget to take it. Okay. The next one we'll do is an ant pattern that is kind of a more of an attractor than a real ant pattern. Um, and I've used it for couple years now and it's really a good producer. Um, does anyone fish the Green River with like the cinnamon foam stuff? That seems to be a really hot one like the Tootsie Roll Ant or the Sailor Ant. Um, this is a similar color scheme but a different shaped fly. So I've got, this is a Gamakatsu C12 hook in it. In the vise, you could use a Daiichi 1130 or a Tiemco 2457 or 2487. Just a light wire scud hook because it is a dry fly. To start out, I'll, I'll use a Rusty Brown UTC one or UTC 70. I'll just get it started, and and for most of this fly, I kind of turn it down in the hook. Not most of it, just to start off. That way I can wrap down the hook shank to about right there, and that's where the body of this fly is gonna end. Um, it has a foam shell. This is just, I think this is called root beer, colored foam uh, in the hairline color. Some companies call it cinnamon, but it's this like rusty brownish color that you want for this fly. So I'm going to cut a piece of foam roughly equal to the, the hook shank or the hook gap. And then I'm going to take my thread up to about right here, right there. And I'm just going to lay this foam on top, cinch it down. And then I'm just going to kind of pull the foam gently as I wrap back and then cover that all up with thread.
For the underbody, I'm just using a rusty spinner colored beaver dub. You could use uh, hair's mask dubbing, you could use dry fly dubbing, you could use ice dub as well, just depending on how flashy you want your fly to be. Okay, so take that dubbing forward and just cover up that those foam wraps. Okay, so we've got a bulky little body. Now I'm going to take the hook and I'm going to put it in the vise maybe a little bit angled up further than you would normally have it. You'd think I'd be able just to tie it with the normal hook placement, but I, I'm crazy like that. So now I'm just going to take that foam, pull it up over, and tie it down right on top of that body. So we've got, you know, a kind of a buggy-ish body on the bottom, and then it's got that nice buoyant foam on the top. <clears throat> For the head, I'm going to put in um, some pheasant tail colored ice dub. So it's like a nice reddish brownish color with, you know, obviously a ton of flash. So the head's going to be shaped a little bit differently. I'm going to take that ice dub and just kind of glob it on there. So I've got a, a head formed here and now I'm just going to take that foam and pull it over. And a lot of beetles or, or ants that you see now, people come and clip that off. But what that creates is a big, nasty square end on the on the head of a, a fly that, you know, a terrestrial has a pretty round head. So what I do is I'm going to take my thread and go back over the top of this foam ball, just with one wrap. And I'll pull that back over and tie it down. So now I've got a double double thickness ball of foam right at the front and that's going to be more buoyant than the back end so that's what we want here so the other cool thing about this one i need a black marker now <laughs> you're racking up the flies today all right so um ants hoppers all those have buggy eyes right so here's a cool way that you can actually create an eye with thread so I'll try to turn it this way and see if I can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to take my, my thread, I'm going to go up to the eye, and then I'm going to crisscross back to make little buggy, bulby eyes. That's completely unnecessary. You don't need to do that, but it looks cool. All right. So when I cut this foam off, I'm going to come in here and kind of stretch it a little bit and trim it off. So we have the little nub back there now. And now we need to build in some floaty parts. This is Sparkle Emerger yarn and it's in cream color. So Sparkle Emerger yarn is just, it's a type of Antron or Zelon or whatever on you want. Didn't have black except the brown. Perfect, that'll work, thank you. So I'm just going to take a, a section of this sparkly merger yarn and I'm going to tie the wings in with it. Now I'm going to have a wing going in on this side and then another one on this side. I'm going to show you a way you can tie them both in at the same time. It really add, it takes a lot of the bulk out of the fly and it's, a, it's faster. So I'm going to take the yarn and tie it in like that. That's going to be the portion of our back wing, but I left a lot going out the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that front wing now and just pull it over to the other side and wrap it down. Let me do that where I can actually see it. So now I've got two wings going off at 45 degree angles from the shank. And I'll just pull those, cut them roughly body length, and now we've got two little wings on the back of that end. So that's, that's a really simple way to tie in wings. 
to ant patterns. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take a hackle. This is a barred dark ginger, kind of a dunnish colored barred dark ginger. Uh, this one was actually labeled a variant by whiting because it doesn't really fall within any set color. Uh, if you go to your shop and you can find variant hackles, go through them all because you'll find some super cool stuff like this. So there, I'm off my whiting bandwagon there. That's my uh, obligation as a pro staffer. I got to tell you about it. Mm. Let me find an appropriate sized one. So I'll just tie in a hackle right here, right, right in front of where those wings are. Just tie that forward. And then I'll just wrap the hackle over that big band of thread. Three or four wraps we will do it. Okay, so, <coughs> oh, that was loud. Um, we're ready to whip finish, so I could just whip finish it right here, but instead of doing that, I'm gonna use those channels that I created in the eyes, and I'm just gonna move my thread now down to the eye of the hook, and that gives me a spot where I can whip finish now. So we're gonna take my black marker that's really brown, which will be fine. And we're just now gonna make little eyeballs on it. So that's it, that's called the cinnamon toast ant. I do it also in black. The black version has just, you know, black dubbing on the bottom, same color wings, but I use red thread and I use grizzly hackle and they're, they're both killers. I tie them in about size uh, 16 all the way to size 10. This one's a 12, but uh, fish them on lakes and streams. I mean, it, it's a really fishy bug. Does anybody know Charlie Card? He guide on the Green River. Probably one of the best fishermen on the planet. Uh, anyway, he does a cicada called Card Cicada. It's probably one of the best cicada patterns out there. And uh, he gave me one 10, 12 years ago, and, but he had freestyled a little bit on it. And I just kind of took that pattern and I, I did a little bit more freestyling. And now I tie that fly, the card cicada variation that I tie, in all different color combos. And it, it really works well. I've had a lot of luck on it. Um, Curtis and I do a hosted trip up to Savory Creek in Wyoming every year. And it seems like this is the bug that does it. We're going to do it in brown, and it has like flesh tan colored legs. So we'll do that one. This is a size 6 Gamakatsu S10 in the vise. And we're going to use, I guess we'll use this thread. I'm usually using, using a thicker thread for this one. So I'm, I'm calling it right now, I'll break my thread at least twice on this fly. So we'll see how well I can recover from that. All right, so this is just that same brown thread, rusty brown. And I think this is two mil. I usually use three millimeter foam and two millimeter foam on this one, but this will work just fine for now. So I'm going to cut a strip of foam that's roughly equal to the gap of the hook. That's kind of my gauge for, for tying foam flies. And then I'm going to cut, cut it kind of to a point a little bit. If you have a lighter, you can kind of singe the ends to round it off a little bit. But what I'm going to do is just put that right on top of the hook shank and tie it in. So that's gonna kind of be wiggly for a little bit. It's not a problem. Then I'm gonna take some tan thread, and cut it a little bit thinner. That's too thin. It 
same thing, cut a point on the end of it. And I will just put that right on top of it, but not extending quite out the back. This fly does ride kind of low. So when I'm doing the cicada version, I'm doing black and orange foam. But this is kind of more of a hopper-ish stonefly type pattern. So I'm using just brown and tan. Okay, so once I have those tied in, I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue and just glue those together. That just kind of helps out with the durability a little bit. Then for the body, I'm going to use some brown ice dub. So the brown brown color in ice dub is really cool. It's got like green and blue sparkle to it. There's something about this color that just makes it a fish magnet. We do a lot of nymphs with this color. We do dry fly bellies like this. Sub it out for a parachute atoms. Catch a lot of fish. We're going to kind of build up a little bit of a bulky body. The body is going to look messy right now, and that's fine. So about to there. So just a, a big beefy body. And then before you pull that over, you're going to want to come in with some super glue and just lightly dab that right on top of the dubbing. So that'll give the foam something to bind to. So now I'll pull both of those over at the same time. Tie those down, and then I'll do the same thing. <clears throat> We're gonna do something a little bit different here. Does so anyone check nymph in here? Anyone try the Euro style nymphing? They use a lot of hot spots on their flies, just like little triggers. So I'm gonna take a little bit of cinnamon ice dub and I'm gonna put that right at the head of this fly. Just so that it's just a little bit different. And then I'm gonna end with my thread right up by the, the eye. So can you guys see that? Just a tiny little touch of dubbing. I'll do the same thing, I'll pull those over. I don't need to super glue it this time. So we're tied in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, the top piece of foam and cut it off. I'm gonna take my thread back over and now I'm ready to tie in the wings of this fly. Let's see, what did I do, there it is. So a cicada, when it hits the cold water, the wings splay out really wide. And uh, you can use like sheeting wings or you know deer hair or something, but I just wanted to go with the easiest possible route, so I'm using the sparkly merger yarn again. And uh, I'm gonna tie that wing in just like we did for that cinnamon toast ant, but longer. but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tie them in almost on the side of the body on this one, because I want it to really splay out. So once I have one of them tied in, I'm gonna pull that over onto the other side and tie that side in. <clears throat> now those aren't gonna help a lot with flotation. They're just kind of designed to lay in the water and cause a little bit of sparkle. So I'm gonna use uh, this pair of post material. Um, but the color that I'm using is called Normwood Special. It's like a cinnamonish, pinkish, dirty pink color. And there's something about this color that I don't know what it is, but I use it a lot. And I've got a lot of this tangled in fish's mouths because they like to eat it. So I'm just gonna tie this in and pull this over. 
So now I've got a bunch of just crap on this fly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim it to length, right about the length of the body. And I did bring my comb. And then I'm just going to kind of comb that all together and make it all one big happy wing. So once I've done that, I'm going to take my foam, fold it back, and again, cicadas have big old beefy eyes just like a, a, a normal terrestrial, so I'm going to do that same trick. I'm going to pull my thread over the top of the foam and then back over it, and I've made some beefy eyes. Now yeah, that's going to be sitting on top of the hook and the fish aren't going to see it all the time. But if you're fishing faster water, that fly is not going to stay perfectly on the surface the whole time. So it makes sense to, to tie a fly that's as you know realistic without going too crazy with it as you can. So trim that off and this, this fly, well I won't do that yet. I'm going to put the legs in. So this is what I was tying in on those. They're just silicone flutter legs in tan color. So I'll just take two of those, and I'm going to show you a really easy way to tie in rubber legs. Um, I'm going to take the whole, these are silicone rubber legs. You can do this with round rubber or span flex, whatever. I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm just going to tie those in so they're maybe a little bit longer than I want. Just hold those in place. Two wraps, that's all you need right now. And those, that'll hold that in place just fine. Then I'm going to take this leg and I'm going to wrap that around the front to the other side and do a few more wraps on that side. So once those are tied in, I'm going to, tie, I'm going to cut them to length. It's about right. And then I'm going to take these middle one or the front legs and just cut them apart. Those are a bit long, so now I'll just take those, take them forward. You never want to stretch the legs and cut them because you don't know how far you've stretched them. I'm just going to push those out the front of the fly, cut them flush, and now we've got rubber legs on both sides of the fly. In addition to that, because this this fly rides so slow or so so low. This is one inch cross-link foam that I use for indicators. And you can see that I've cut out a whole bunch of these with one of those foam cutters. So when I'm ready to tie, tie some in, I just have them like that. I just take one of those off. And I'll tie this in right about in the middle of that foam. And then I'll cut the front section short. So you just have a little finger sticking up there and that's not going to cause a lot of wind resistance it's really thin foam and then all I'm going to do just like the cinnamon toast ant take my thread up through those eye notches and whip finish it and that's a fly you can really crank out fast you don't have to use any natural materials on that that usually is what slows you down when you're you know stacking deer hair and stuff like that but um, that version of the, the card cicada has been really good. Any questions on that one? No? You got it. All right. We're out of time. <laughs>